We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence is not an act, but a habit. Aristotle. It is easy to say that we want a great career. It's even easy to figure out how. Well, kind of. There are plenty of videos out there that show us people who have had great careers and they allegedly show us the steps that they took to get there. But when it's that easy, why does it feel so hard for you and I to have a great career, to have that success that we strive for? This is where things become a little bit more complex. It requires us to dig into our own thoughts and habits. It requires us to think about how we relate to the people around us. And we also come to see that sometimes it depends on how we perceive the world around us. But why that is the case? Let's find out. Have you ever had a friend who says they had gossip and drama and yet all they do is gossip and create drama with their actions? Or you have somebody in your circle of friends who talks big game about the next project they start except they never finish any of them. And it's very easy for you to detect that mismatch in behavior in other people, but are you detecting it in yourself? Self-awareness is quite tricky. You have plenty of reasons to lie to yourself. When you truly want to pursue self-awareness, it also means that you have to confront things about you that ideally you don't want to know. But to have a great career, you are what you repeatedly do, and that requires some observation. When I was 16 years old, I thought I will be the next Warren Buffett. I had my internet with a dial-up modem, I had four telephones on my desk, and I started to trade commodities at the Chicago Board of Trade. And I knew stuff. I knew everything about it, except my actions. They yielded a constant stream of losses and disappointment. I even knew why I was doing badly, but my trading was so emotional I just couldn't help myself. And most of us stop there. We either continue to lie to ourselves and continue to do what we started to do, or we conclude that this particular activity just isn't for us. We are not cut out for it, but we never question the reasons behind our actions. Maybe you already know what you need to do to get to the top of your career. Maybe it requires you for hours grinding through spreadsheets, which for most of us isn't an enjoyable activity. But rather looking at our inactivity, we look at the excuses for it. Our boss doesn't appreciate our work, or they don't give us the tools that we need to do the job. Why? Because every negative behavior that sabotages your success also has a payoff. See, you don't do the spreadsheet so you have more time with your family or for social activities or just for complaining to other people about your job. And this is where Aristotle comes to help us. He says we are what we repeatedly do. It's not an act, it's a habit, which made me think about actors. And an actor doesn't just fake the persona that they want to represent. They don't just act out something how somebody is supposed to be. They try to become the person. And by becoming the person, it is no longer an act, it becomes their habit. There's this notion of fake it until you make it, but you can't fake a career until you make it. Because you'll run out of energy. You have to become the person who does what needs to be done. You have to become the person who goes through those spreadsheets. And that is the step number one for a great career. But you can't do it alone. Have you heard somebody complaining about the politics at work, how all this politics is responsible for them being held back in their career? It's such a comforting feeling to know that you are not responsible, but it's the politics in the workplace that hold you back. Except, you guessed it, that is an excuse as well. See, you go home to your spouse, and you have politics. You are two individuals with sometimes similar and sometimes different opinions, and there is politics involved. Even when you go and see your friends, you have discussions, opinions, you have different viewpoints, and so politics are involved. 
And you may not call them politics, but when two people or more come together, it is inevitable. But when you think about your spouse or your friends, then you also think about what they want. And so you approach that discussion completely differently than you would at work, where sometimes we just sit back and settle for pettiness. But when you want to have a great career, then use the same principle. What does your boss, your staff, your colleagues want from work, from the company or from yourself? And when you start focusing on that, when you have this positive approach to politics in the workplace, your career will start to take off. Except for this one thing. We often have a clear picture in our head how success looks like in our place of work. It's often formed by opinions of other people, colleagues or maybe our predecessor. And of course it's useful to learn from people who held jobs that we have now, but it leaves you with a risk. And that risk is that you stop playing towards your strengths. When you started out in your career, you had very few reference points on what works and what doesn't work, nor were you long enough in one place to know what other people thought about it. And so you just did what needed to be done, you just did what worked for you. And that played towards your strengths, and that made you successful. But the further along you come into your career, the less likely we are to do that. And why is that the case? Because we have expectations of ourselves. We see how people worked in that particular job before us. Maybe your predecessor was a great organizer, but you thrive more with creativity. Or people tell you that you have to be a great leader to be successful in this position, where yourself, you'd rather like to solve problems by yourself or have an open exchange of thoughts with your colleagues. Don't believe for a minute that there's just one path to success. It's not true. Elon Musk, for example, he leads two huge companies, but his key success isn't leadership. His key success is that he has a very scientific approach to everything and a huge, vast knowledge. So design your career around your strengths and you will win. And winning is what I want for you. So whether you look for a new job or you want to brush up your current career or you want to maybe even change your career into a complete new direction, make sure that you check out the playlist that's on the screen right now. Because one thing that all these things have in common is that they require courage to change and courage to grow and that is what those videos are about. So let's do this together. I'll see you over there in the next video.